Hello, everybody. My name's Llama Joe, and welcome to my channel. Alright, we are back with the letter. So, I'm pretty sure we already read this part, because I think there was, like, another scene change. But, just in case, I'm just going to read through it again real quick. Um, yeah, we roller coaster ride of all kinds of emotions in the last few episodes. Oh, I'm hoping to finish this game soon, though. <laughs> it's so long. Okay, here we go. Uh, oh yeah, I'm Ashton. For some reason, I was going to read his Isabella, and I don't know why. As soon as we, the lift hits the ground floor, we hightail it out of the building. Seb's sound asleep when we pass by his station. However, in the face of what we've seen, everything I've faced tonight, we can't really care less who will still see us on our way out. The sooner we get away from this place, the farther, the better. I'm just not sure if that also means being safe. She almost got us, damn it. The fucking thing almost had us. Shit, it was only by luck that we managed to get the fucking elevator unstuck. Had the blast thing not work it in the last sec. Worked in the last sec. Work it. Oh no. I need some fresh air. Fresh, breathable air that doesn't stink like death and gore all at once. I'm panicking. Christ, losing focus. With another person here, I can't afford that right now. Isabella hasn't said anything, but I know she's more shaken than I am. I can't lose it when another person's depending on me. Remember your training, Frey. Another deep breath. And soon, I'm starting the engines and driving us off. After that little instant, somewhere open would be good. Okay, could you not? Okay. Someplace I won't get trapped. Luxburn Park brings a welcome relief, though only by some. The chill that has seeped in my bones is still there, furling and unfurling underneath my skin. If I don't move, if I don't busy myself with anything, soon my brain will go haywire. The last thing I want to happen when there are plenty of things to do. But this already answers all of it, doesn't it? Those deaths? Just how many copies of the letter are out there? Isabella can't have the only one if other people are also getting cursed. Could it be that the one she has shown us is just one of five? Maybe even more? That whole pass this to five people business is ridiculous, but at this point, is it still? All in all, we found 21 people who might have read the letter. Seven of them deceased. Eight, if we count Cooper. And that's the only, and that's only with what we can find right now. We have no idea how the contractors and specialists hired from outside the company are doing. If we are in any way affected, how many more people are suffering? How many are missing? How many are dead? Can I still even blame the rights for this? If anything, they might be in danger as well. I don't think I can wish a curse upon anyone, no matter how big of a douchebag Luke Wright is. There's also that woman. How do we get out of this mess? How do we get away from her? Shit. Still so many things we need to look into. Yet all my body wants to do is pace, burn out whatever excess energy there is in me. Ashton, I'm getting dizzy. Will you sit down? It's the first time Isabella has said anything. She's been sitting quietly since we dropped here. Better and less distracting than watching her nervous habits, I suppose. She certainly seems calm now. Too calm, in fact, for someone who's just seen something terrible. But it's been more than a week for her already. People do get desensitized to things at some point. Even someone like Isabella. Who knows what's going on inside her head, though? Inside mine. There are too many, and none of them would sit still. I'm not going crazy, am I? I saw that. I'm pretty sure I saw that. I didn't inhale anything weird. Just shit. Shit, 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 shit. Isabella, please tell me that wasn't... What I'm not expecting when I turn to her is mirth. One that she could barely contain. You're laughing. You're laughing. Why are you laughing? <laughs> I'm not quite sure what she sees in my face, but in the next second, a laugh suddenly burst out from her. I'm so sorry. It's just that you should have seen the look on your face back there. Why isn't it doing her voice? Yes, right. Sure. I'm not the one who panicked. You almost ripped my arm off. Really? We're just not doing voices? That's just... Okay. Yeah, but... Isabella, this isn't funny. That woman almost got us. We could have ended up dead. I know. I'm really sorry. But this is just too precious to miss. You really lost your shit for a moment there. You're trying to get back at me, aren't you? Well, I'm not the one who kept calling someone scaredy cat for years. <laughs> How does it feel? I'm not scared. Really? Because it doesn't seem that way to me. At all. I'm not, alright? I'm just... I... I just don't know what to do right now. 
Immediately after, the moment passes, replaced by another tense silence. Laughter dies in her lips as everything sinks in. We're in deep shit, and it's finally caught up and hit us like a ton of bricks. Hit me more than anyone. Because she has been warning us of this since day one, and I'm the first person who brushed it off. Despite that, she still reaches out to me, tugging at my sleeve, almost desperately. Her hands are trembling, and there's a tremor in her voice when she speaks. Without the cheer, only fear remains. One that she has been burdened with from the beginning. We're still going to do something about it, right? Well, hopefully. Not just stand around and let that thing get us. Unexpectedly, she leans her forehead against my arm, and a grip on my sleeve tightens. There's desperation in there. A quiet plea. I don't want to lose anyone anymore, Ash. I wish I could give her that promise. But with so many unknowns, so many things I don't understand about this, how could I? Why she still trusts that I can do something about this baffles me. It all feels wholly undeserved, considering the way I've treated her. Yet, despite my reluctance, I find myself returning her holding kind. A grasp. Warm and light enough for comfort. Not a promise, but the closest thing to it. Oh, finally on to- Whoa, what is with the panic music? Oh, no. Darkness blurs the edges of my vision. Black tendrils twist and coil around my limbs. Soft footfalls echo from the far distance, scurrying, scampering, moving in an odd rhythm with the sharp, piercing notes of her laughter. Oh, this is a nightmare, clearly. A scream threatens to burst, but my throat closes off ever so slowly. A chill seeps into every nerve in my body, washing away every sensation in me apart from one. There is only fear. <laughs> Once again, her laughter echoes, a sound both bitter and unforgiving. It is the last thing I hear before she reaches for me. The ground trembles. The world slows to a stop. <gasps> oh ho. Sleeping over at Isabella's, I see. Morning breaks in a blurry mess of vivid shapes and colors. Oddly, there's no feeling of terror or confusion gripping me, despite the vague images that has driven me from sleep. Awareness kicks in shortly, though slow and sluggish, as I blink away the last remnants of unconsciousness from my eyes. The early morning light already streams from the open windows when the memory sets in and the room finally comes into focus. Isabella's apartment. Pushing myself upright, my eyes wander idly towards her prone form. Oh, it's a weird way to describe it. Okay. She's hunched over the coffee table, both her arms under her head while she continues to rest. Oh, that's really sad. Then, to the chaos of papers and folders we've left scattered over it before sleep has claimed both of us. We bunkered down here last night, after both our nerves have calmed down. Mine, for the most part, staying together was an unspoken invitation. And anyway, I'm pretty sure neither of us wants to remain alone when there's that... that woman. Is she still one in the first place? One that we normally call a human? Can it still feel guilt? Does it understand pain? Fuck. I'd rather get charged for breaking and entering than mess with whatever that thing was any day. Uh, yeah. Not that thinking about this still matters when all our lives are in her hands. She's dangerous. If we don't do anything about her and this curse, we'll definitely be pushing Daisy soon. I can't let that happen. I've dallied on this long enough. Left all my friends in harm's way after the warnings they've all given me. Besides, beneath the terror and the adrenaline that keeps me running... Knowing what lies ahead for Isabella makes it hard not to take action. The paper sitting on the edge of the table calls my attention at this light against my hand when I reach for it. It has caught my eye the night before, but with a lot we still need to go through, I've simply ignored it. The logo emblazoned at the top of, my, up top of the page, however, provides this paper a whole new meaning. Not for me, but definitely for her. A scholarship grant, huh? I've only ever heard her talk about this once or twice, completing her degree, that is. She rarely goes about it in great detail, preferring to keep it to herself. Perhaps it's the fact that she thinks she's already too old to be chasing after it. It has been five years, after all, but I've caught enough snippets of conversation between her and Zack to know she has never given up on it. Despite how things have panned out with her father, she's one step close to this part of her life. As silly as this may sound, coming from a friend, I, I'd like to give her the chance to have this. Whether this means stepping out of my comfort zone and figuring what the deal with this curse is, I'll do so. If only to see the same smile in her from, from that time again. These days, the only moment she seems to show it is when she's asleep. Like right now, no matter how uncomfortable she appears. A smile of my own forms, despite this, when I glance at her sleeping form again. 
She hasn't moved since, her shoulders rising and falling in a slow, even rhythm with her breathing. You won't think she has any problems this way. If only that were true. Yeah. Sign. I placed the paper back where I've gotten it. Carefully. So I won't accidentally wrinkle or damage it in some way. And finally push myself off my makeshift bed. Isabella shifts when I carry her off from the floor and over to her bed, but doesn't wake. Simply tucks herself comfortably under the covers I pull over her. Briefly, though, she mumbles something to herself and draws in another deep breath. Becca, Ashton's being dumb again. <laughs> okay. Ooh. I got scared. I thought I skipped past it. I was like, oh, I double, I like, did a double click on accident. She drifts back to a deeper state of sleep after, like it has been interrupted by the slightest movement earlier. But the small smile on her lips remain. One I find myself returning in kind. Who sleeps like a rock now? It's better this way. Better to leave her dreams for the moment, which I hope are better than the ones I've had. She'll have time to worry about our problems later when she wakes up. For now, this will be another thing I don't want to take away from her. A moment of respite, no matter how fleeting. She deserves it, after everything she's been put through, what I've put her through. In the meantime, I still have two other people I need to check with. Isabella will definitely get in a tizzy if I don't check on them. Yeah, it's a scene change. I, uh, I'm cutting it a little short, but it makes up for all the long ones that I do, so that's fine. Thank you guys so much for watching. As always, feel free to like, comment, subscribe. Tell me what you like, tell me what you don't like, and I'll do the best I can to make it right. I'm Llama Joe, and I'll catch you guys later!